Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, but I'm gonna bring you another Strong Women series, and this time it's with Lisa Cannon. which is south of Birmingham, in case any of you were wondering. Hence our kind of, wow, I say our, my accent. I'm Worcester born and bred, so Worcester I'm, born not, and bred. I'm not Troy Witch, I'm afraid. Well, neither am I, I'm Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> Opposite ends. <laughs> She's posh, I'm not. The reason I wanted to have you on the Strong Women series is because I was super impressed and inspired by the fact that you have this facility and you are the only female, correct me if I'm wrong, in Worcestershire, is it, or West Midlands with your own mm, functional fitness facility? Yeah, I well I suppose it depends how you look at it. In terms of functional fitness and group classes, um, yeah, Worcestershire I think I am. So, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure somebody will like a load of hate mail now. <laughs> but yeah, I think I am. Tell us about your fitness journey, how you kind of found CrossFit, functional fitness, and how you're a coach and a coach who not own, well, a coach who owns her own place. I mean, I kind of by accident, I suppose. So I was, I've been a nursery nurse all my life, um, from 18 up until, oh God early 30s and then my best friend dragged me to a Zumba session which I never ever wanted to go to but being the supportive friend that I am I went and then yeah kind of got a little bit hooked I was overweight anyway myself very unfit um, led a very wild 20s that's a drinking party um, yeah <laughs> so yeah went to went to Zumba with her Ended up going week after week after week and then kind of got the book for it. And then one of the ladies who, um, whose boys I looked after, or children I looked after at nursery, also went to the same Zumba session. We became friends and then to kind of cut a, a, a long story short, um, I ended up teaching a little bit for her on weekends and evenings as well as doing my full time job, um, just to give her a bit of a break. And then ended up having the opportunity to do it full time. So I quit my job and spent my days teaching spin, urban rebound, zumba, you know, all that sort of stuff. And then, yeah, basically through that and working in a gym, met Mike, who was just about to open up his own functional fitness, CrossFit facility. Did a few hours for him and then realized that I actually really enjoyed that as opposed to teaching Zumba, um, I still love spin, but yeah, other kind of classes. And then, yeah, that's kind of led me to here. So I didn't find functional fitness until, or CrossFit, 2016, I think, at the grand old age of 36. And been doing it ever since. That's oh, brilliant. I love the fact that you've gone from like Zumba, which I adore. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, massive Zumba. I don't think it'd be a shock to any subscriber out there that I love Zumba. But um, yeah, I can't imagine, I can't imagine you're not shaking it. But a bit, of, a bit of club of size, it's pretty good yeah, at club yeah. of size. Yeah. Corona glow stick around. 
But it's that um, the, the absolute contrast of like Zumba da, 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 and like a functional fitness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what led to you um, opening up your own facility? The gym that I worked at alongside Mike, unfortunately after lockdown one, was not to be anymore. So it was the kind of, it was the perfect opportunity. I was 40 that year and it was kind of the, yeah, it was either now or never or then or never kind of, kind yeah. of scenario. So it was one of those where I just went for it, had a little go um, and that's kind of what I did. And here you are in your how many square foot gym? It's about, I think with everything added on, it's about 5,000 square foot. Floor space is about 3,008, I think. So there are loads of space to train. Lots and lots. And you've got lots of extra rooms as well, haven't you? Yeah, rooms. Yeah, I've got a room which I'd love massage in, and then I've got a lady who comes to do some yoga for us. So she's got a little bit of a home as well. Do you take part in the yoga? I have done. I probably should do more, but I'm either coaching or doing my own rounds, so yeah. And you're leading a team of how many coaches? Yeah. Um, we've got uh, two and then an intern. Yeah. So I know when we initially met last year, was it last year? Yeah, it was last year, last summer or before you opened the gym. Yeah. I was really um, not completely shocked by your story about the kind of challenges you had to even get the space. So can you tell people about that and how you kind of overcame it? Because that's what kind of led yeah, to this video. Yeah, I just, I suppose the, the hunt the hunt for a unit was obviously quite a stressful one. Um, I had a lot of people who obviously wanted to stay with me, which is lovely. You know, I coached them for a long time before, so they wanted to stay with me. So it was, it was like, it was pretty, I desperately really needed to get a unit. We, we obviously taught outside for a long time. We did outdoor sessions while obviously COVID, you know, cope with COVID restrictions and stuff. So we desperately needed somewhere for home. Um, and then, yeah, just the hunt for units, just visited and looked at absolutely anything of any size, anywhere, Worcester, Droitwich, wherever. Um, but yeah, it was quite, it was quite difficult. I very much felt on certain occasions that because I was a female, um, yeah, I was kind of fobbed off a little bit on quite a few occasions. Um, one guy actually said to me when I phoned, was I even serious about wanting a unit? Mm, well, yeah, I was once the phone. Um, yeah, so I kind of got that response a little bit. Um, but. Tell me about the delay. You had a few delays, didn't you, as well? With the yeah. Board? We so the unit um, that we're in was twice the size, um, and the people that were already in it obviously just needed to utilise half. So we had to wait for a dividing wall to be built, which, like anything, just yeah. We just kept hitting a few hurdles. <laughs> So yeah, it took um, probably a good, uh, probably even a nearly almost two months, I think, longer than we expected to get it up and sorted. And then the wall got finished on the Friday evening and we were due to open on the Monday. Which ironically, I was watching a video last night and I didn't realise I had no toilets in or anything. <laughs> and we built the gym on a Saturday and a Sunday and we got one toilet sorted. Um, and yeah, the rig in, the flooring in and the kit in ready to open on the Monday, and then Boris told us we had to close. <laughs> All of this during lockdown, the, the demand for builders went up massively, didn't it? Yeah. Um, so it was hard to get. Yeah, well, so that was the other thing, was getting, just getting stuff, mm. just to get brick, you know, anything really, yeah. and the building train was just a nightmare. And then, yeah, we worked our backside off for two days, me and my dad, um, the lads, my coaches, my best friend, my sister, whoever, everybody came over so we could get the gym ready for the Monday. And then, yeah, we only managed a couple of days before we said no more. <laughs> but during that time, I managed to come down and train. You can see kind of how the gym has transformed over the year. But to do that over, you know, to just 
go, you know, as a solopreneur to put all your eggs in one basket as well, take that plunge, I just think it's just so admirable and brave and exciting and I wish more women took risks and we all know we always play it safe. Um, I, am, I am the least <laughs> risk taker ever in the whole wide world. But generally, ever. like I am. so many people Don't, yeah. would want to do what you've done. And I'm sure there's p women, men out there watching this video wishing they had the kahunas to do that. But you've done it. And yeah, we've done it and we're, yeah, we're year in already, which is just mental because we've only been open about six months. Yeah. Which is pretty sad, really. Are there any, well, I'm sure there are benefits though to being closed. It's meant you've had time to really kind of get all the, I'm just going to rephrase that. Lisa has the most organized <laughs> gym ever. It's ridiculously clean. There's, there's a no chalk rule. Like, I'd love a no chalk rule. Well, but there isn't. Okay. Okay. Well, you, there think, isn't. you would think there's a no chalk rule. Every detail has been thought about, and I love that. <laughs> I'm here for that. Um, and having trained as well as no female touch, I, I just think ticking all those boxes just to make your experience that bit nicer is really beneficial to be members. I just think it's great. Oh. It, it, at the end of the day, people pay a lot of money to come, don't they? So you can't, you've got to almost. Like you've got to be providing a service which matches ultimately what you're charging. Mm. So, don't think it's too much to put a hairdryer in the back, is it? No, not at all. In lockdown, you did your comps, didn't you? Oh, I did. Uh, you, yeah. Yeah. So oh, tell. I even featured that in one of my videos. <laughs> so I do I'll, indeed. I'll hunt out the footage. Now. Um. Yes. Yeah, so we did. We did two in the end, I think. So we just did two little online comps. Pairs. I came to the gym and hosted it from here. We just pretended we were at a comp, so we did. We had all our movement standards. Yeah. We the, the workouts were based around what people had at home and what space they had at home, so everybody could do it. Um, yeah, do a little wad, didn't we? And then we had a half hour window to rev up for wad two, and we did yeah three wads. So we did that twice, I think, in the end. Yeah, it was good fun. Uh, I loved it. It gave Ruth and I a bit of purpose on a Sunday morning, you know, throughout lockdown. It's like, oh, why not? What are you going to do? And it really just, yeah, it just mixed it up. Yeah, a couple of online comps, which went well, I think. Mm. And, and that's what makes it special. And Lisa goes above and beyond for her members. And I'm sure her members know that and appreciate that. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't happen everywhere. <laughs> we had the wonderful Sarah Davis, Olympian, Commonwealth Silver. Yeah. Come and do a weightlifting workshop. So how was that? Yeah, great. It's good. Yeah, just did a bit of research on Instagram really. Mm. Just noticed that she um, she held a lot of workshops where she lives. I'm assuming, or where she trains. Mm. So I just messaged her and said, don't suppose you fancy coming to us? And she was like, yeah, mm -hmm. that was it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, there was 20, 20 of us, I think, in the end. Um, had a whole day with Sarah, a good six, seven hours, I can't remember now. Um, yeah, being taught by the best, clean and jerk and snatch. Um, we had some ladies come from different places, London, Huddersfield, etc. whilst joining, which was really nice. And I've kept in touch with those as well, so that's, oh, that's okay. quite cool. So yeah, made a couple of new friends there as well. But yeah, it was good, great day. The guys really enjoyed it, some really good feedback. Um, and obviously they were all in, all massively in awe of Sarah and her lifting. It was real fun and just, again, very empowering to be at, at an event with a gym you own run, it's your baby, yes. with this badass Olympian who can outlift anyone in that room. <laughs> yeah. By far. Twice. Yeah, <laughs> twice over. <laughs> Literally, her cleaning jerk is double mine. <laughs> 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 so, it was more than a boy doing. I can't even do it. <laughs> yeah. It was just something, just, it just really, it really spoke to me and it's, 
I know it's like we're in 2021, we're nearly in 2022, but it's there's still that, you know, your experience just proves that, you know, women aren't taken seriously enough. And I think, yeah, more women need to support women in the functional fitness yeah, sure I environment. You've got started over at another gym where you've got kind of learnt your, the trade as it were, as a coach. Yeah? Everything right. to be honest, because yeah. I, when I, <laughs> I'd never heard of CrossFit or anything when I met Mike, so I couldn't even, one of, I'm sure he'll tell you himself, but one of our happiest moments is trying to watch me single skip. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Which I couldn't do. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, not all. You've got your mate one end and your other mate the other yeah. end and you're just skipping in the middle. <laughs> don't have to coordinate arms and lips. I didn't know. I couldn't do anything. I hadn't really ever lifted a bar, if I'm honest. Just when I kind of got into my... kind of got did more spin than anything, but I just... The gym I worked at, I, I used to train with a couple of lads in there and we'd do a bit of squatting and a bit of benching. I was tempted. <laughs> and a bit of deadlifting, which I worked out I was pretty all right at. Um, and then we even looked into whether I would make a good power lifter once. Um, did you do it? What did you do? What? what? But, but, I didn't, uh, but I didn't do it. Because no. I ultimately went into, yeah, got into CrossFit. So when I started out, I had no idea what a wall ball is. I've never done a box jump in my life. Couldn't, clearly couldn't sink or skip. I mean, there's, there's still loads of stuff that I am unable at this moment in time to do, but I know I will be able to mm. do them at some point. I suppose the nice thing for me as a coach is that I can say that I, when I'm standing in front of people and they get frustrated, for example, if they can't get a double under, I can hand on heart say, I understand how it feels. Mm. Or when they're there saying, I don't, why can't I get my first pull up? I understand how they feel. Mm. It took me, I think, 18 months to get a strip pull up of working my backside off. Um, so I can kind of relate because I've been there and I've done it. Mm. And I've pretty much had to do that with everything because I generally didn't have, didn't know anything about the sport if you like when I first started. So, um, and I was just very, very lucky that I obviously trained with or, you know, I was allowed to coach and co-coach and watch Mike, who was a really good coach. Mm. I'm so lucky. Mm. Um, and he was the only guy I ever worked for or trained alongside or anything. So yeah, ultimately I just kind of got into his his way of thinking, his way of coaching and all that sort of stuff. And then yeah, she's got us to where we are. And tell us about, um, you do competitions as well, don't you? I'm sure you said you did Tribal mm. Clash one year. Yeah. Right? yeah, well, I say do comps, we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I do, anyway. We've always been of the mindset of, it's a day out, it's a weekend <laughs> out, yeah. we can stay over somewhere, we can have a Nando's and we'll have a lovely time. <laughs> yeah. And that's of the mindset we yeah. are always at. No, to be fair, we've done, yeah, we've done tribal two years on the trot and then we should have gone last year, but obviously we didn't because of COVID. So yes, yeah, so we will, <laughs> ironically, we will be doing that in 2022 because we, um, they wouldn't let us not. <laughs> Yeah, they wouldn't refund us, so we are still we oh, still right. have a team in for trial. Oh, is it still a thing then? Yeah, apparently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Still got that money. Yeah. Well, they went missing for a little bit, didn't they? Mm. And then um, yeah, but apparently yeah, it's still on, and we have a place for 2022, whether we want to go or not. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be yeah. there. Yeah, we normally do um, Inferno pairs. We really like. We just we yeah we just like stuff that's not too complicated because mm. we like to get as many people involved as possible mm. so to go and have to do loads of high-end gymnastics or something I think I'm sure would put it would put me off as well because I'm not very gymnastically challenged <laughs> <laughs> I'm gymnastically challenged <laughs> I'm more weight challenged um yeah so yeah we just like to go to ones where it's just you know 
Your general. Running, yeah. rowing, box jumps, burpees. Mm. Just your general stuff that everybody can get their teeth into. Mm. Just have a good, yeah. good little weekend. But yeah, we do like we do like to do that. We normally have a competition calendar as well, which at some point I'll try and put together, obviously once we know what's going on with COVID and so yeah, so we like we like a comp comp or two. Mm. Why Great. not? Yeah. I mean, I know for some, it is a lot of effort, isn't it? Like, especially when you're organising people. But again, Lisa's very organised and you think of everything. So yeah. with you at the helm, I'm sure your members really appreciate it because it is a lot of, it is a lot of work, isn't it? Planning, organising and yeah. getting people to pay their dues and on time. And yeah. it's, um, yeah, it's, it is, yeah. It is hard at times, but you know we've got we've got quite a good we've got a very good system, so yeah, they're all pretty um, they're all pretty good. Yeah, it just goes to show the community you have here again. Yeah, um, and, and none of these gyms would be as successful as they are if it wasn't for that community aspect and the effort gym owners put into events and creating that community. Yeah, because, you know, if you, in terms of my members, a lot of them have got gyms at home, mm -hmm. but they would far rather not train there, and they'd far rather come to here oh, yeah, and that. have the atmosphere and stuff. Mm -hmm. Prior to COVID, I, yeah, I was training five, five times, maybe six times a week, um, but I would probably say there I felt like I was really at my peak, and I was pretty fit and pretty happy with everything and then Covid one hit um, didn't really have the room to train at home so me and my little dumbbell so that's all I had on my skipping rope <laughs> um, did a lot of stuff together you know we just did <laughs> so, <you're> now... <laughs> so I'm now an absolute pro yeah. <laughs> double double yeah. um, lots of skipping lots of running push-ups sit-ups you know all that all, yeah. all the all the um, all the body weight stuff and then obviously in June when we potentially thought the gym was going to reopen we obviously didn't reopen so then I was still without the gym to train in and then yeah obviously made the decision to set up on my own so life was just full on then and I just completely and utterly lost kind of lost my mojo for the gym um, really busy building it sorting it um, open November, still I think everybody had trained in it apart from me, because um, I just, I don't know why really, I just think I was just, I was just tired, I just completely lost my motivation and I'd come in every day with the intention of doing something and I'd be like, mm, not today. That's understandable. Um, so I don't think I did my first session in my own gym until about December. And then obviously we thought we were gonna be able to reopen again, and we did, then it was the tier system, and then lo and behold, we went into lockdown three. Um, but I tried really hard in, in, from Jan, I came down and I'd do some work from here and I would make it my aim the second I walked through the door before I came into the office to do something. To try because otherwise if I go into the office and I get sucked into stuff, then I just, yeah. So I was like, right, leave your bag in the car, everything in the car, go in with the sole purpose of training only. Um, so that's what I did in the, yeah, from kind of January onwards really, just to get my mojo back. Yeah, so I'm still, I don't feel like I'm anywhere near where I was at. Most of my training days or training is spent on the quad. I need to try and find a bit of work-life balance at the minute where I can try and get back into a class or two a week and have a bit of be pushed a little bit and yeah train with others and not you know just be plodding along in an AMRAC on my tod yeah where I just you know oh I'll just have five seconds rest here where I you know um yeah I need to I need to be pushed again really I would like to do some comps again next year but obviously I just don't feel like at this moment in time, I'd be fit enough, which I think I'd be disappointed with. Yeah. So. Well, that's fair enough, if you think. Yeah. But then on the flip side, it's probably a great time to go because then I could be like, well, actually, Lisa, 
maybe you're not as unfit as you think you are or yeah maybe you need to work on that and maybe yeah you still you have still got those even though you think you haven't got those or you know because obviously comp brings out a different yeah. side to you so who knows yeah and it might be good to put a comp in the diary then your training might yeah, yeah. it's always good to have a a goal yeah, like a focus yeah, yeah definitely i was always like that with the marathon training so i think that's what got me out the door knowing i've, I've got to run a marathon in three months i need to get out and try yeah. <laughs> need to train yeah. european champion masters which was mm -hmm. quite cool um, keep forgetting about that one didn't tell anybody i was going because i didn't want anybody to come with me I didn't, yeah this was yeah 2019 didn't want anybody to come with me um i just sort of just want to go not put any pressure on myself, see what I'm like in comparison to other people, um, in comparison to the other girls. I did all right, to be fair. Um, and then, yeah, but I quite, yeah, quite enjoyed that one. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm up for, I'm up for anything. Give it a go. She said, I'm not allowed to take that back. <laughs> oh, thank you, finally, you said that on the video. That's been noted. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> We're quoting that on screen. <laughs> yeah. So where do you see, um, like where, what do you see for the future of UK fitness and kind of functional fitness as a whole and have you got any exciting plans? Um, have I got any exciting plans? Um, obviously, I'd massively love COVID to just vanish. That would be great. Um, yeah, like, obviously there's always things we want to do. Ultimately, you know, the dream would be to obviously have um, a few more members, to get lots of sessions on, you know, to be in a position where, you know, you've got four or five different coaches, you know, the gym's open all the time, you know, sort of, I'm sure any kind of long-term goals of anybody you'd like to think or you would presume who's got their own gym. Um, Obviously, potentially, um, CrossFit affiliation um, will be something we could look into. I would just love to have, obviously, a bit of a better work-life balance, which is obviously always difficult when you, you're starting new anyway. Um, and to be able to obviously enjoy the gym a little bit more, train with the members a bit more, and kind of all the um, office -y stuff to kind of deal with itself a little bit. But I'm sure we'll get there at some point. Mm serve the community and I'd love to put an event on or a couple of events on every year maybe as well and get different people from different gyms to come so that'd be that'd be quite cool as well to get some um to start building some relationships obviously with some different facilities around around uh, the area and a little bit beyond continue to push on and build which is the aim in the words of Yaz, the only way is up. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I feel like I need to train that song now. <laughs> the only way is up. <laughs> Lisa, thank you so much for being on my Strong Women series. Oh, wow. Lovely covering your story. Um, thank you. And you will see more of Lisa, I'm sure, in my future videos. But genuinely, I think you have the recipe for something great and you've put all the hard work in to the foundations. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you haven't already, please like this video and consider subscribing for more videos on strong women around the UK. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah. But pardon? Yeah, the landlord sent you a picnic bench over. Oh good, because I need that today, don't I? Minus two. <laughs> oh, wait, it's supposed to be in the glow. Oh, is that oh, nice? Yes. Yes. Oh my god, I've only just got it. <laughs> it's a peck. It's a yeah. peck. I didn't even know that's what it was. It's not a shrimp. <laughs> a nipple. Oh, yeah, it's a nipple. nipple. I thought it was a belly button. <laughs> this is... Might look pretty. <laughs> With the little people on it. Look, the little, little, little people on it. That's me. <laughs> Hello, friends. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> you awkward. Oh, it's awkward, isn't it? It all of it is awkward. <laughs>